Folks, my next guest at this time is a nominee, a comic extraordinaire who's been in the business for over three years. What's amazing about him, he's the tender age of 35 years old, and he lives with two phenomenal roommates, his Portuguese parents. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jeff Estrada. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You know, this is really exciting. Like, how much of your material comes from living with your parents? And number two, where do you get the courage to kind of divulge that, being at the tender age of 35? Tender. And, I like that. And That's... being confident to explore that without ridicule. Uh, I, no, I want the ridicule. Uh, that's, yeah. it's, laughter comes from tragedy, and that's a lot of tragedy, uh, living with your parents. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's very hard. It's, it's the hardest thing. It, it would be like telling somebody you have a, like a communicable disease, like leprosy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's worse than that. Because yeah. like, I'll be on a day and be like, oh man, I gotta tell her. Yeah. And what yeah. am I gonna tell her? It's like, <laughs> I should tell her I have leprosy. <laughs> Because at least leprosy is curable, right? Yeah. She'd be like, oh, leprosy, that's but fine. But not moving out from yeah. home. That's just... Well, you live with your parents. I'm out of here. Well, and, there's yeah. two interesting things that, that work with you that probably builds a lot of your material. Um, the fact of living at home. But yeah. number two, at 35, you're exploring a career path that's only three years in. Uh, yeah. And I can really identify with that. Like, being on air, I've only started about four or five years ago, and I'm 36. I feel like I should have started this a long time ago. Do you find there's any anxieties of starting allegedly late in the game, or has that empowered you with your material to be successful? I think are? it helps. Uh, I think it's the fact that you've had that life experience where... You know, I've done IT for the last 17 years, right. so, I mean, that doesn't, it's not really a funny industry, but. <laughs> no. like, uh, hello, it's, you got a virus again, yeah, that's too like, bad. That's probably the only funny part is <laughs> telling people, how did you drive to work today if you can't do this on the computer? Yeah, exactly. Um, how did you even make it? Uh, but yeah. it, 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 being older, I see a lot of the younger comics that are, you know, very, I mean, let's, using that same term, very young, infants-like stage, right. like comparatively right. speaking. Uh, they don't have that life experience yet, so they right. don't have anything to temper their material. Right. Uh, the older guys, yeah, we have we have a little bit more. We've been through the through the the war kind of thing. So when did you came to realize that comedy is the route that you wanted to go? Uh, oh, for, I, for me, I would sit back and think, well. You know, you have a lot of life experiences. Uh, you want to express them, but what was that aha moment where you were going to take a risk in a, comp in a in a career path that there's seldom success rate in, just given by the nature of how hard you got to work. With comedy, you have to have the day job. Like that yeah. day job. Uh, if my if my company you don't have for, to even yeah, yeah. <laughs> if they're watching right comedy now, X. I love my job. Well, yeah. it pays the bills, right? That's right. Luckily, in That's comedy, right. we're we're. The it's a night thing, job. Yeah. You know, the only thing that suffers is your sleep. Right. That's the only thing that suffers. Right. Um, the aha moment was, yeah, when you get that first laugh. Right. But I'll be honest, the reason I did comedy was the girl. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. I got, I had the hots for a comic, and uh -huh. uh, she turned out not to be exactly the woman I was looking for. <laughs> uh, she turned out to be, uh, I don't want to use that word on no. TV, but. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, she turned out to be nice enough. We just didn't have a match. But you know what? I was yeah. like. I got into comedy that way. Yeah. So, yes, as usual, most things that happen in life are because of women. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I need more women around me, so more yeah, things yeah. happen more to me. That's your happen, advice, yeah. essentially, right? Yeah. <laughs> when you look at uh, being on, uh, getting to do stuff on television, I got the opportunity to explore a lot of my heroes yep. to help cultivate me. Who are some of your heroes and your mentors and contemporaries that really shape your style to mature you to be the comic you are? I, I'm, I tend to be a story-based uh, comic um, because I find that's the most uh, appealing. Right. Uh, it's not appealing, but most honest and easiest to get out. Right. Really. And so people like you know Larry David, Jerry Seinfeld, uh, Louis C.K. These are the guys that they'll just they'll just talk from their own lives. And right. I find the best comedy is not structured so much that it's off the wall. Right. It's more about you know. And not slapstick. Yeah, yeah. It's more yeah. you know slapstick has its moments. Trust me. Yeah. Rodney Dangerfield's ma yeah. the master of that. Yeah. I have two knees that are probably shot because of slapstick growing <laughs> up. Um, Pratt Falls. <laughs> yeah. um, the Mandarin. I think they still have me banned in Brampton <laughs> from there. Um, <laughs> Yeah. I don't know if you know this, it's an Asian establishment. Wow. And yeah, they they are hilarious when they, they see a white guy falling over. They <laughs> laugh. I'm to be honest. Chinese people are mean. They're mean people. Slapstick. Yeah. Uh, where would you where do you recall the place that you penned your most best joke? Ah, that's easy. Uh, it was it was at a place in Brampton, because uh -huh. we do a lot of shows for, for Neil Griffin. Yeah, yeah. And so Did it a show with him last yeah, week? Yeah, yeah, it was Jack's Backyard yeah. in Brampton on Kennedy. And uh, it was the story about going to the gynecologist with my mom. Yeah. And awesome. that's when I had that aha moment of like, wow, 
I made a, a comic who's a veteran laugh. And we're gonna see, yeah. and we're gonna see you at the Mari's May 7th for the beautiful Living Arts Center. Folks, stick around for more. We're gonna be right back after this.